Okay, so, this is <laughs> so who are you first of all? Um, my name is Emma Ride. I'm an outreach officer for Astro Cymru and we do astronomy related workshops around schools. Okay. So we take these round to schools and we show the children. Yep. This is a core of an asteroid. It would have been a big round ball and we've taken a slice of it. Right. And you get the Widman Staten patterns. Widman Staten. Widman Staten patterns. Yep. They're always 90 degrees to each other. It's from yep. the shock impact right. and from the heat. That that would have caused, yep. but th then they will cool down over millions and millions of years. This yep. is how you get the crystalline structure then. Right, okay. In the actual core, you would have had them coming up this way as well at 90 degrees, but obviously we've taken a slice of it. Yep. So it's basically very similar to the core of planet Earth. So this is what asteroids are made of, it's an iron core. Mm. And we've got to keep this sealed because it's made of iron. The oxygen in air is literally rusting it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we have to keep this sealed. All right. So your typical asteroid is basically made of an iron core. Yep. Then you've got a molten mantle. Yep. And then you've got a stony outer crust layer. All right. So these are where this the different bits come from. Yeah. What a planet is made of as well. Mm. This is exactly how you make a planet as well. Mm. And the reason we know this is from an asteroid mm -hmm. and a meteor as well because it is highly magnetic. All right. Yeah. yeah. So this is called a chondrite. Mm -hmm. A chondrite is basically made up of lots of pieces of different things. So when the early solar system was forming and you had bits of iron floating around, bits of silicon floating around, mm. gravity would have brought them together mm -hmm. and you can literally see bits of iron, bits of stones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yep. there's no stone on planet Earth magnetic. Right. So if you can pick up a stone with a magnet, then it is literally from space. Right, okay. And you can see where the crust has been scorched All right, on so that, entry. So that's the fusion crust, is it? Yes. Yep. So, so friction would cause this in the atmosphere as it's coming in. Right. So the heat then literally would have cooked the surface of it. So okay. this is how you get the different colours there. All right, okay. This is from an asteroid called Vesta. Yeah. And what this is a crust, but you can see literally where it's differentiated between stone and an iron in a core. Right. This is a slice of that as well. Okay. How can you tell that it's differentiated, sorry? Where can you get them? Because this is the iron. Yeah. And then this in there then is the stone. Can you see lots of different materials in there? So you've okay. got bits of silicon. Which is what a typical asteroid is made of. Okay. Yes, I know what you mean. These are called tectites. Right, okay. And these are formed from normal rock on planet Earth. Yeah. A meteorite would have come in and hit that rock. All right, okay. Ejector would have been blown up into the air, boiling hot. Yeah. And then it would have cooled as it's coming down. And there's another one there. And it's changed the chemical composition of the rock right. almost into glass look. Oh yeah. See yes. that there? That shiny oh, that shiny bit there. there. So there's not a bit of, yeah. that's not a bit of water on the surface. No, that's no, actually no. the rock itself, which has almost become turned into glass. And the reason why they're all teardrop shapes yeah. is because gravity is heavier towards it. Uh -huh. So this is why you get the raindrop shape. All oh, right. Okay. Almost like a. Uh, a mini version of the sort of spaghettification that you get actually occurring near black holes. <laughs> so this is a similar type of thing. Yeah. Instead of the meteorite hitting rock, it would have hit sand. Right, okay. So you've literally got your silicone being blown up, boiling hot, cooling yeah. as it's coming down, and it literally has turned it into glass. Yeah. It's very translucent. Oh, right. oh, yes, you can yeah. even, even on yeah. here, I can see it shining through. Yeah. Oh, wow. Actually, it's, it's even better through the camera, actually. <laughs> that is amazing. So it shows how they change the chemical Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Oh. So here we have um, a mock-up of moon dust, what we think moon dust is like. She don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> she only read the paper the other day. <laughs> it sounds good, regardless. It's OK. <laughs> If you pop your finger in there, you can have okay. a feel of what um, what it'd be like on the moon, basically. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's not actual moon dust. No, no, no. I don't think you'd be getting me to put a finger in actual moon dust. I appreciate. And this is a mock of Mars dust. So this is basically iron oxide. Your okay. Rust. So. But very fine. Th this very, say this very seems very fine. yes. finer than the moon. This thing is. And we get photos of dust devils on yep. Mars. Yeah. And if you shake this up. Yeah. And watch the steam coming out there. Oh yes. See? Yes. 
You can see how the yeah, dust establishment yeah, is absolutely. On, on the Because it's very fine dust, it easily very just fine. gets picked yes. up by the air. Yeah. So here we have um, basalt rock. Yeah. This is formed from lava cooling down, yeah. which is basically the, the darker areas of the moon. Yeah. And we think the moon was um, molten to start with, and then over millions of years it would cool down. Yeah. So this is a typical basalt, mm -hmm. the darker areas, and then this would be uh, an orthosite, feldspar, mm -hmm. the lighter bits of the moon. Right. So these have come from volcanoes, but it's more or less the same thing. Yeah. And in you, you've got bits of olivine, mm -hmm. granite, quartz, mm -hmm. which is from the heat and then cooling down over a long period of time. Then. Yeah. These are what we call Martian blueberries. Oh, no. oh yes. right. Okay, yes. Yeah. I've Hematites. seen the pictures. Yeah. yeah. Hematites are called. And you get these on bottom of the riverbeds where the rivers yeah. are rolled in them. Yeah. And we found them um, on Mars. Mm. Curiosity, yeah. the rovers, taking yeah. lots of pictures. Remember seeing the pictures, yes. Yes. Yeah. So it kind of proves that there was water on Mars once yeah. evidence of water on Mars. If, if, yeah. well, and if you didn't believe that, the talk this morning is sort of like uh, could convince anybody, yes. I think. Yes. <laughs> i got to say, uh, uh, the folks at the club who might be watching the video, that was one of the big things this morning was the chap who was talking about yeah. the, the latest lander on Mars yeah. and the fact that uh, the evidence for water is now pretty much 100%. Yes. Yeah, not yeah. just any old water, but long lived lakes, yeah. flowing water yeah. on rivers, the channels. Uh, and enough over a long enough period of time to set down quite a lot of sediment as well. well yeah, yeah, true. So this is sedimentary rock, a typical yeah. sedimentary rock. Yeah. And this is formed from the calcium from when these animals will die in. Yeah. So they full of calcium, these shells, yeah. and the reason why we've got this rock is from that calcium. Yeah, okay. We've got creatures, little see, worms. So it may not be visible on the on the tech uh, on the video, but I can actually see here a, a rather incredible array of uh, fossils inside yeah. that. Yeah. In fact, it looks like somebody's drawn them on the surface. They're that impressive. Wow. So it's the death of these animals that have actually caused this rock. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. And obviously it's found in um, seabed. 